Now, as I understand it, Robert, you work with all of the major social channels, WhatsApp, Instagram, Telegram. What kinds of communications are you seeing between businesses, between customers and businesses in Ukraine specifically? Hi, Emily, and thank you for having me um, on the show. Um, look, before Message Group was being used primarily for omni-channel B2B communications, um, today we're seeing a lot of NGOs, communities, um, uh, using us for all sorts of help. Um, as you said, it can be simple things from organizing, coordinating medicines, uh, uh, blankets, transportation. Um, we're just trying to provide our services to as many businesses as possible at the moment to, to help out. So what does that mean? How are you supporting these businesses who have these flood, this flood of requests at this time? Well, several different ways. Um, I mean, one, we're just, I mean, as a company, we provide uh, customer service tooling, so different ways for, for people to coordinate on top of our platform. So we're obviously providing that for free now to, 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 to those companies, uh, businesses. But this isn't just businesses, to be honest. It's um, just as much just people trying to help out. I mean, if you think about it, it's about 2 million refugees have now come into Europe. Um, so a lot of people are trying to help out in different ways and we're trying to, to, to coordinate as quickly as possible. Um, at the same time, we we launched our own fund um, uh, to help out. So our employees are helping out. Um, I'm trying to organize other tech founders to come together and, and all of us use our uh, knowledge companies um, um, to, to try to lend a hand in this terrible situation. So this $10 million NGO fund that you mentioned, what's your hope about how this will help? Look, the fund is broader. Um, um, uh, we're looking to, the, to to deploy the capital in the next two years. Um, but, you know, right now it's needed as much as ever. Um, so we're trying to do anything we can um, uh, um, for, for, the, for the community. I think more broadly, uh, um, than the money, what we're really trying to do is just stand up. I think it's important for CEOs, founders to speak up. Um, I think the um, technology sector is uniquely positioned to help out. Um, we've all built amazing companies that we can do stuff with. Um, you know, I'm working together with, for example, one of the, in the Netherlands, the founder of Bunk, which is an online bank. Um, uh, he's doing amazing work trying to get refugees now uh, bank accounts so so that we can coordinate money, something simple, because obviously their bank accounts in Ukraine don't uh, actually work anymore. Or the founder of Picnic, which is an online supermarket um, who has, you know, all sorts of supply chain and logistics to, to, to coordinate funds. I think it's initiatives like that that where we're really focused um, uh, to try to help out. Well, speaking of standing, standing up, this clampdown that we've seen on services across Russia. We've seen a number of companies take a stand. Do you have any exposure in Russia? Are you cutting off any of your services to Russian businesses and users? Yeah, we have um, uh, pretty much immediately. Uh, um, look, I'll be honest, it's it's 4% of our revenue. So it's, it's you know, it's uh, uh, we're a $500 million company. It's significant, but it's not um, it's, it's not going to kill our, uh, kill our business. Um, but I think anything that we can do um, globally to to say no um, and to stand for peace, I think is important. Um, obviously, I would say that the Russian people inside the country have absolutely nothing to do with this. Um, so it's sad for them too. Um, at the same time, it's, I guess, the only peaceful protest that we can do is by stopping services to, uh, to, to the Russian community. Right. Now, I know you're joining us from Amsterdam. You do have a team in Ukraine. How big is that team? How are they doing? What is the situation there and how are you helping them? We and have a very big team in Ukraine. Um, luckily, all of our employees are outside of the country. Um, uh, we were able to get them out pretty quickly, um, but they still have family there. Um, so, uh, uh, so far, as far as I know, everybody is is doing okay considering the circumstances. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's horrifying. I mean, we have families where, like, you literally hear the ar air alarms go off. Um, I don't know how you call it in English, but the, the and you know, it's just the, uh, it's, it's 2022 and we're having a war at the borders of Europe. It's crazy.